The life of Ukrainian helicopter pilots makes James Bond look like an amateur. Flying low and fast over a combat zone takes a lot of bravery and incredible amounts of skill. But the reward can be just as high. Welcome to Talking Tactics, where this week it's about helicopters. Whether for transport, reconnaissance, attack or to evacuate personnel, helicopters have many uses. They're more maneuverable than an airplane and they need much less space to take off or land. But of course, flying much slower and lower than a fighter jet, they're also quite vulnerable. So it takes a lot of skill to fly in combat situations. Ukrainians, however, have just that. In over a year of war, their crews have pulled off some of the most unbelievable stunts that will definitely go down in military history. Absolute numero uno was the Azov South sorties. The word sortie comes from French to exit and is used for a couple of things nowadays. In the Air Force, it's basically just another word for mission. Anyway, Ukrainian helicopter crews flew secret missions in spring of last year to the besieged Azovstal steel plant in Mariupol, venturing many kilometers deep into enemy territory, bringing supplies and ammunition and evacuating the heavily wounded. You can check out our in-depth correspondence report by clicking on the link in the description. Another memorable mission targeted a fuel depot in the Russian city of Belgorod, once again venturing deep into hostile territory. All this becomes even more impressive when you look at the most common types of helicopters used by Ukraine, which are Soviet models like the Mi-24. Those were designed in the 1960s. There have been quite a few helicopter deliveries by Ukraine's foreign partners, including Mi-17 helicopters that the USA had intended for the Air Force of Afghanistan, and also a Sikorsky UH-60 Black Hawk, which is now in service with Ukraine's military intelligence, GUR. But the most common helicopter you will see in any combat footage on the Ukrainian side is the Mi-24. It has a top speed of a little of over 320 km per hour and depending on the variant can be armed with multiple machine guns, unguided rockets like the S-5 that are shot from the large barrel on the side and also guided anti-tank missiles. The Mi-24 has a variety of nicknames including the Taoshi tank, flying tank, crocodile and stakan, stakan glass because of the large cockpit. The Mujahideen, which was the name of the Afghan resistance fighters combating the Soviet invasion of Afghanistan in 1979, called it Shaitan Orba, Devil's Chariot. Unusual for a combat helicopter is the Mi-24's ability to also transport up to eight soldiers. The losses of helicopters on both sides have been significant. As of May 2023, the Ukrainian Air Force has reported losing more than 30. According to the general staff of the armed forces of Ukraine, Russia has lost almost 300. Of course, like with most things, Ukraine is doing its best with what they have. But still, the discussion about Western military aid has been mostly about things like ammunition, tanks, IVs, air defense systems and even fighter jets. Helicopters haven't really been an issue yet and it's hard to explain why. All this talk about will Ukrainians be able to handle more modern and complex systems hasn't proven itself to be a legitimate concern. Men, we're talking about the guys who fly 70 kilometers into enemy territory to evacuate their guys from a besieged steel plant. And the enemy territory means not controlled by some guerrilla force somewhere in the mountains, but by the Russian army. By the way, it took the Ukrainians only a few hours to fly the newly delivered Black Hawk. We just boarded and flew, one pilot is quoted. Of course, the worry of the Western partners concerns not so much the actual flying, but more the complex weapon systems on modern attack helicopters. Still, I'm sure Ukraine would appreciate an upgrade for their air force. But let's look at Russia. The Russian fleet of helicopters is of course much larger than the Ukrainian one. Apart from using the same Soviet-era helicopters as Ukraine, they have a couple of different newer models. One of their prized helicopters is the Kamov Ka-52 attack helicopter, a two-seated attack helicopter nicknamed the Alligator. The Alligator is one of these things that sound incredibly impressive on paper. Great optics, night vision devices, precision-guided missiles, and with this very specific coaxial rotor system. It has great armor and an injector seat for both pilots, so all the things that the older Soviet-era helicopters lack. The Russian Air Force originally assigned this helicopter to support special forces on dangerous missions somewhere behind enemy lines. But it just hasn't lived up to expectations in any way in the Ukraine war. Forbes magazine actually called the Ka-52 attack helicopters death traps. And here's why. With the beginning of the full-scale invasion in February 22, the Russian attack helicopter fleet, this was their strategy, was used to fly aggressive combat missions behind enemy lines. So they were used like they were originally intended to. It was all part of this fast-track plan to destroy the Ukrainian government and force the Ukrainian army to surrender. But as we all know, that didn't work out. And Russian Ka-52s just kept getting shot down. That's even though the usual defense mechanisms of these helicopters, like releasing flares to decoy incoming missiles, were working quite well for them. But superior tactics by Ukrainians and Western aid still prevented them from achieving what they wanted. So they decided to take another approach and change their tactics. They even really had no choice. 
According to account by Dutch open source outlet Oryx, Russia has lost 33 Ka-52 Alligator helicopters since February 24th. That's around a third of their entire fleet. Most of the kills come from so-called MANPADs, or Man Portable Air Defense Systems, like the American Stinger. It's an anti-aircraft system that can be carried and fired just on your own shoulder. But actually, Ukrainians also shot down with Ka-52 with a guided anti-tank missile called Stugna. Anyway, by the time the Russians retreated from around Kyiv in April, many of their best K-52 crews who were supposed to help ensure a swift victory were already dead. Those who didn't die became a lot more careful, so they had to change strategy and these days they resort basically to two main tactics. On the one side, like the crews of Soviet-era helicopters like the Mi-24, they shoot unguided rockets and high ballistic arcs, giving it this kind of rainbow trajectory. When you watch videos of helicopters conducting attacks in Ukraine, you will see a lot of them lifting their noses up while firing. This gives the rockets a higher range, allowing them to stay on the Russian side of the front line, which is much safer. But this method is also kind of inaccurate and inefficient. Their second strategy is using guided anti-tank missiles like the Vichel, which has a range of up to 12 kilometers, also allowing the Ka-52 crews to shoot from the safer side. But there's a catch. The Vichel is a so-called beam rider, which means before you release the missile, you shoot a laser beam at the target. To do that, you can actually fly, but you have to hover. And not only while aiming, but the real problem is you can't move the helicopter before the missile hits the target. Again, beam rider, so it rides the laser. And that can last up to tens of seconds. Might not sound like a lot, but it is way too long to hang around in mid-air when you have an army of angry Ukrainians fitted with weapons like man pads. We hope this gave you an interesting insight into helicopter warfare in Ukraine. Thanks for watching Talking Tactics. Hit like and subscribe and see you next week.